Wasabi Wallet. I'm fairly private. Hodl that Bitcoin. What's up, everyone? Ben with the BTC Sessions here. I am still on vacation. This is uh, next up in my video series. Um, now, I am away, but I've got some interviews for you. And if I could please enlist your help while I'm away, I am promising my wife to stay away from social media for a couple weeks and kind of turn off the brain for a little while. So if you guys could do me a favor and share these videos out across all your social media, it helps in my absence and I really do appreciate it. Now today I've got an awesome guest. Uh, his name is Hass McCook. He is a civil engineer. He was a presenter at Baltic Honey Badger in Riga, Latvia that I attended. Uh, and he's got some incredible insights when it comes to gold and Bitcoin and other other assets and and how they stack up and what their impact is on society and the environment uh, so we dive into that um, I, I really enjoyed speaking with Haas I should apologize a bit in advance there were a couple moments where my internet got spotty so if you notice that the conversation jumps a little bit it's because I've clipped apart where it dropped out I'm sure you guys will be able to piece it together no problem it's not too many spots like that um, now outside of this of course if you want to help out this show you can hit out any of hit up any of the people that I'm working with of course Aladdin.io where you can use your Bitcoin for a couple services a few services now you can check out uh, of course their Bitcoin backed loans where you can obtain Canadian or US dollars using your Bitcoin as collateral they have Bitcoin savings account where you can earn interest on your Bitcoin paid in Bitcoin and they also have a program called B2X now where you can gain double exposure to Bitcoin basically long Bitcoin if you're a super bull uh, so be sure to check them out also NordVPN if you want to use a VPN service to hide your IP address and encrypt your browsing data, there's a link below to check them out for three bucks a month. And of course, always coin join my friends, Wasabi Wallet, check them out and maintain privacy with your Bitcoin. And with that, we're going to dive into the interview. Let me know what you think and please enjoy, share, like, subscribe, and I will see you for the next one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the BTC Sessions. I have got a wonderful guest with me today. Uh, I got to meet this gentleman over at the Baltic Honey Badger Conference in Riga, Latvia, just recently, uh, I think about a week, week and a half ago now. And uh, I really enjoyed his talk. He had a great talk there. And I just had to have him on the show. Uh, so, uh, Pass McCook, welcome to the show. How are you? No, oh, I'm fantastic. Great to be here. Uh, man, wild to meet you and uh, and the rest of the community out in Riga. So uh, we're a bit isolated here in Australia. So uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, I love my brothers and sisters uh, 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 here in Australia, but sometimes it's uh, nice to see the cousins too. So uh, <laughs> great, to, great to get out and see all you guys. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome to to meet everybody there. I I really enjoyed all the presentations. Um, I really enjoyed yours, uh, and it was like the side conversations that you get to have at an event like that are are pretty priceless as well. So um, that thanks for agreeing to come on. I I got to briefly interview you there for like a one off question in kind of a, a clip together mix, but uh, I figured it was better to expand upon some of your knowledge here so maybe what i'll do is i'll, I'll toss it to you i'll let you explain uh, who you are what you do um and kind of i guess what brought you to bitcoin what was your rabbit hole uh trajectory of getting into the space all right i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go into a life story here i'll, I'll let you, everyone here piece it together but basically uh uh, I find myself in a very weird niche in uh, in this community. So I'm a I'm a civil engineer. So uh, I uh, I speak in sound bites. So here's a here's a sound bite for you. Uh, you know, when it comes to engineering uh, the digital world, uh, I wouldn't know shit from shoe polish. Uh, uh, but I I I would and I will claim to be an expert on engineering the physical world. Uh, so, uh, so I've got a very, very uh, uh, great and deep connection to the physical world. So I started, uh, 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 I went into university quite young. I went in at 16. So effectively, I had to choose my life path at 14. Uh, you know, so when you're 14, you've got a big heart, idealistic. Said so the best thing I can do, like uh, 
uh, for civilization uh, is build civil infrastructure. Uh, so going through the career, big infrastructure, mega projects, whenever you've got a big project, you've got to ask for money from, you know, generally bad, bad people, uh, completely disillusioned. Uh, and uh, and after after doing my uh, my MBA at Oxford in 2012-2013, uh, I uh, I developed a state of mind that the only infrastructure in the world uh, worth caring about and building uh, is Bitcoin. Wow, this bold claim there, bold bold assertion. Yeah. <laughs> so when, yeah, since I've uh, since I've done a lot of uh, uh, of tunneling. Uh, one of the one of the topics I kept noticing, you know, I was very, I had a very like spiritual and emotional connection to Bitcoin, and uh, you know, uh, preceding the crash, there was a lot of fud uh, going around, uh, you know, trying to stab uh, the knife even deeper and twist it. And uh, one of the big pieces of fud was about uh, environmental impact. Uh, obviously, there's a, a million other things. Did an analysis of the uh, environmental, social. Uh, and economic impacts of gold uh, and be compared to Bitcoin. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to be kind of diving in to a lot of that stuff. Um, sorry, Hass, are you, are you getting me okay here? I'm getting you perfect, loud and clear. Okay, perfect. Just making sure that internet connection is all good. Uh, but um, so we're going to dive into a little bit of your research. So um, let's kind of. I guess, dissect first in regards to Bitcoin. Um, wh what were some of the, the narratives that you noticed? And once you dove into your research, what, what did you turn up? What, what's the reality? So uh, uh, when people ask me about Bitcoin, uh, I ask them to suspend disbelief, teleport yourself to the year 2050, there's all energy is going to be clean and carbon free. Uh, it will be because it must. Uh, and if it's all carbon free, who cares about energy? Uh, but it's currently not carbon free, unfortunately. Uh, so it does emit a bit of carbon. So I figured, you know what, let me figure out how much it does uh, and compare it to gold and whatnot. Uh, in, in 2013, 2014, when I originally published my research, it was a little dwarf. So I didn't really use that much energy, uh, but now uh, becoming a becoming a, a, a big boy, and uh, you know using using quite a bit, uh, it'll keep using more. Uh, but I posit as energy gets cleaner uh, and much cheaper, and typically the cleaner ones are becoming the cheapest. Uh, we we'll use a lot of energy, no emissions. Who cares? Yeah. So, so in, in your, in your research, um, you just said, uh, essentially that the, that the cleaner options are becoming the cheaper options. And so you, you're positing that, that essentially because Bitcoin miners, their bottom line is dictated by their energy costs. They're going to start migrating by and large to these cleaner options, and and I mean there has been some studies in regards to uh, kind of guesstimating where a lot of Bitcoin mining is done and the energy sources that are used. Um, did you kind of dive into any of that? I know it's tough to for sure say, but did you dive into any of that in your research? Then uh, I took the twenty fifty approach uh, that there will be like max competition and like. Uh, Max, uh, uh, just just uh, it, it just uh, on on average, the global grid wouldn't be as random. But for now, I had no choice but to use uh, global average uh, grid settings. Just everything's so anonymous; it's just hard to pick out uh, where everything is. And you know, there's some places uh, you know where the electricity is super cheap. Many places actually uh, where you can just uh, like, uh, you know, I'll be uh, straight and honest where, you know, uh, someone with a lot of black money uh, that needs to be cleaned could set up a couple of containers and, and clean their money. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure this is happening all over the world. Uh, you know, how, how about that for some FUD? Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, was, I was reading earlier today, uh, if you can shut down a dictator, uh, you can shut down a refugee. Uh, so, uh, 
people, uh, it's, a, it's a voluntary system and people are going to voluntarily choose to play and we're going to have some bad guys and we're going to have some good guys. And uh, not, there's, one, there's one piece of FUD uh, uh, shot down in the soundbite. Yeah, exactly. If you can shut down a dictator, you can shut down a refugee. I like that. That's great. Um, so I'll then, have to I'll have to attribute that to to someone. I definitely it's not an original. I read it on Twitter earlier today. Oh, that's all good. That's all good. Oh, we'll we'll parse through the tweet storms that have happened today and see what we can find. <laughs> um, so, uh, in relation to that, then um, you've done extensive research as to the costs of of paper fiat and and gold. So maybe let's let's kind of dive into the gold partition of that and and what are the costs and and I guess this this would be largely summing up some of your talk from Riga uh, which was the I love the title of it. Can you say what the title was? Yeah, uh, orange coin good, yellow rock bad. I <laughs> love it. Awesome. So he, if he, if you haven't seen the talk, uh, I will link to uh, the video with the timestamp if you want to go to the in-depth uh, gold versus Bitcoin talk. But uh, let's kind of unpack some of the stuff that you had to talk about in Riga. Uh, so effectively, uh, I like to take the, the triple bottom line approach uh, on everything. Uh, I don't like uh, seeing... Uh, the impact of one particular element of the triple bottom line being social, environmental, economic. Uh, I really do think uh, they're inseparable. So, uh, and not only that, I'll give you an example. So, uh, in the in the civil engineering world, you know, particularly on a on a on a mega project, uh, you you to just get your approvals, uh, you need to do an environmental, an economic, and social impact assessment. So economic, you know, obviously to build the build the business case, environmental to see what impacts the construction and operation of the infrastructure is going to have, and uh, social uh, regarding the effects of, uh, you know, you're mandatorily acquiring someone's farm and uh, sticking your highway through it, uh, and and a lot of that. So you've always got to look at the triple bottom line. Uh, so uh, uh, I did unpackage gold. From uh, from that perspective, so I uh, I I left I left economics uh, aside and just focused on uh, environmental and social because because uh, I think the economics are, are quite similar. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bitcoin and gold, uh, it's just uh, gold's just uh, not suitable for a anymore for the times we live in, largely because of its uh, environmental and social impacts. Awesome. So, so let's let's uh, dip a little bit into, I guess, the environmental. Um, there okay. were some pretty juicy stats um, and and tidbits that you had about uh, the cost of just producing a, a single ounce of gold, um, yeah. or you know, you had you had some. So maybe let's dive into that. What goes into actually producing uh, a little bit of gold? Yeah. So. Uh, uh a little bit of gold requires a, a whole uh, a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, basically, there's two ways to mine gold. Uh, there's one called a, a open cut, where you dig just a you just dig a massive hole in the ground. We got some gold big gold mines here in Australia, some of the biggest, and you can see these uh, open cut uh, mines uh, from space uh, on Google Maps. So. Uh, like I said in Riga, a lot of rock is moved. So uh, more than the CIA in the eighties. Uh, <laughs> so all of this, uh, all of this rock is, uh, you know, goes through a, a, a cycle of cycle of crushes until it's a nice little fine powder. Uh, it's soaked in in cyanide, uh, a lot of it, and a lot of water. Uh, the gold then leaches out of the rock into the cyanide. Uh, uh, the gold's then, you know, uh, detoxified. The cyanide sent off to a tailing dam, which burst all the time. Uh, you can even uh, do a Wikipedia like list of uh, gold uh, 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 gold mine disasters. Uh, very few Bitcoin gold mine disasters, by the way. And then, uh, and basically, then uh, the gold's reconstituted, re reconstituated, 
and uh, then it's turned into bullion, uh, which is actually a, a door bullion, uh, which is gold and some silver. And oh. then it leaves the factory, then it needs more energy uh, to, to turn it into uh, uh, investment grade or jewelry grade gold. Wow, that's that's a lot more than I imagined. You know, people people picture gold mining. You just you dig and you pull it out of the ground. And look, look, it used it used to be, it used to be just like uh, just like Bitcoin used to be uh, mine on your laptop. Mm -hmm. uh, but as as it gets scarcer and as the difficulty increases, uh, you got to prove more work. Yeah, that, well, absolutely. Now the the other interesting thing there is is the cyanide bursting out of the, you know, that, that whole aspect of it, I'm sure a lot of people are unaware. I mean, you, you hear a lot of things about, you know, whenever a, a pipeline bursts or, or there's a, an oil tanker. So you, you hear a lot about potential environmental impacts of that when there is a disaster, but you, I mean, I can't remember hearing really much about gold mine disasters ever. Really? Is, is, is there a reason? Uh, uh, Look, a lot of them happen in China, uh, simply because I'm guessing uh, engineering approvals for the construction of the tailings dams uh, isn't that strict. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the in the developed world, a, a dam uh, a dam won't break. Yeah, uh, it might be uh, uh, water might flow over it, uh, like we saw in the case in uh, in Louisiana during Katrina, but a, a dam shouldn't shouldn't burst. So the fact that they happen all the time uh, means pr the standards aren't uh, the standards aren't too high. And and that's one of the things uh, you can't regulate every miner in the world. Uh, you know, there's going to be some shoddy ones in different parts of the world. For example, the illegal miners uh, in uh, in the Amazon in Peru, uh, they don't use cyanide. Too expensive. They use mercury, and uh, all of their mercury goes into the Amazon. Oh my God. <laughs> so it's not a huge quantity for the, for the, for the, you know, size of, of the Amazon, but trickle by trickle by trickle by trickle, mercury bioaccumulation. Uh, so uh, I say all these terms because people uh, actually uh, uh, don't know. The civil engineers created the LCA, the life cycle assessment. So uh, I'm a huge greenie. Uh, I'm just not a, I'm just not a, uh, a, a zealot eco-terrorist. I, uh, I definitely, uh, I, I care more about uh, resource uh, sustainability than, uh, than uh, carbon emissions. And we'll get to that a little later uh, in our chat. Awesome. Okay. So I, I guess the, the other part of it then, do you want to touch a little bit on, on the social impacts of gold? Yeah. So uh, how far back you want me to go? Cool. <laughs> Let's go Let's... all the way back. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, what were the great pyramids of Giza built on the back of? Well, the, the slaves. Uh, what are the great empires of uh, of bygone millennia uh, built on the back of? So, basically, every war in the history of man, uh, all war and con uh, conquest, uh, has been in the in the pursuit. Of this uh, of this scarce resource, and uh, and uh, and the powers that be at the time had no worries about putting the slaves uh, to work to get his gold. Uh, you know, like uh, you know, obviously gold had had a boon back then as well. We wouldn't have you know basically had all the had all the the world's great you know discoverers and, and navigators, but they were all chasing gold as well, basically. So uh, the social impact of gold, uh, difficult to say, you know, funded war and all of that kind of stuff, but there was definitely a lot of human exploitation uh, to get uh, gold out of the ground. Uh, genocides in, in South America, uh, uh, genocides of local Native uh, American tribes during the California gold rush, uh, and on and on and on. So... Uh, uh, once it was once we're off the gold standard, really, it stopped having too much of a too much of a social impact. Uh, with the main social impacts now being uh, uh, being illegal mining uh, and uh, you know having literal uh, child slave 
uh, illegal mining, uh, you know, workforces. Uh, a lot in Southeast Asia, uh, a lot in South America, uh, and all over the place in Africa. Hmm. Now, now, what do you say to anybody that looks at that and says, well, what will be different if we achieve a Bitcoin standard? Is, is there a, a clapback that you have to that? Maybe if uh, if uh, if uh, ASICs develop uh, consciousness, it might be unethical to exploit them. Uh, but who are you exploiting to mine Bitcoin? Uh, your bank account and uh, and some uh, and some bricks. You can't uh, sit a really smart kid down and ask him to do proof of work by hand for you to generate some satoshis off him. Yeah, you, you, you could, but it, it wouldn't be very fruitful. <laughs> so I suppose, uh, I suppose the, the, the negative social impacts could be if you had uh, a child slave uh, labor force building, building the mining equipment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're an ethical enough space, I believe, personally, uh, based on my interactions with people like you and everyone at Riga, uh, we simply we just wouldn't stand for it. We wouldn't buy tech from a child labor uh, uh, manufacturer. Yeah, uh, uh, it's a, it's a far more honest money, uh, ethical money. Uh, so I don't think these social uh, problems could materialize. But you never know. Uh, yeah, there might yeah. be, you know, uh, slave workforces somewhere. In a, in a niche factory producing uh, producing the ASICs for the cartel. Yeah, we'll, we'll just have to outcompete them, right? Absolutely. It'll be easy. we got economies of scale. Yeah, exactly. So I guess, uh, did you want to tag some more stuff onto gold or did you want to segue into a little bit of, of the examination of, of fiat currencies, like the paper money? Oh, I'll I'll tack on uh, I'll tack on more for gold. So I, I ran you guys through the process, and I said you know you need a lot of you need a lot of rock, a lot of water, a lot of cyanide uh, to get some gold. So the the amount of gold that's uh, that's mined every year it's not much. It's thirty seven hundred tons, and gold's quite heavy. It's almost twenty kilos a ton. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, twenty. Uh, 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 it's 20 times the weight of water, so uh, uh, it's uh, 20 ton per cubic meter. Okay. Uh, so uh, when you take that into account, the, the amount of tons of gold mined and divide it by its density, it's basically just enough gold to fill like a 60 square meter studio. Like that's it. That's all the gold we get out of the world every year. Uh, barely anything. Uh, but to get that gold, uh, you need like uh, 400,000 Olympic swimming pools uh, of water or uh, uh, a thousand gigaliters. Uh, oh yeah, you need a lot of water. Uh, uh, you, need a, you need a lot of like uh, cyanide. I think you need something like uh, uh, several uh, million tons. So it's enough like uh, doses, like I think it's enough for like it, thousands of doses of like suicide uh, cyanide pills for every man, woman, and child on earth. Oh my god! Uh, so a lot of cyanide, and uh, and in terms of rock moved, uh, uh, there's two ways you can visualize it: either a, a cone uh, with a one kilometer uh, radius base that's as tall as Everest, uh, or a thousand great pyramids of Giza. Wow. So like that's, that's super hard to visualize. So how I presented it at Riga was a, a, a simple gold ring, which is about 10 grams uh, of gold. So that I need like 20 bathtubs of water, uh, a kilo and a half of cyanide, and like a dump truck full of rock. So, for, uh, for one ring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, if you've got a amenable partner, uh, I would uh, melt that shit down, uh, uh, buy some uh, uh, buy some sats, and then uh, sign a message uh, in the blockchain professing your eternal love. Far better than any rings. Immutable love, everybody. Short, short the yellow rock. Don't double spend your wife. 
Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So I guess that that's a pretty concise view of the impact of, of a, a single, you know, piece of jewelry on, on the environment, just to have something nice around, around your finger, or around your neck. Um, so with that kind of pictured in, in people's heads, we've kind of gone through this, the social impact, the environmental impact. And I mean, the, like you said, the economics of gold are very similar to Bitcoin, but what goes into achieving those economics are where it differs. Um, so let's take a dive down the opposite side of the sound money versus fiat money uh, rabbit hole and, and take a look at the impacts of even just printed money. Is, is that a, a realm you want to take a look at? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, so in terms of a uh, problem with doing a comparison of, uh, of, uh, of fiat to Bitcoin is the, the famous Bitcoin fixes this meme. Uh, so effectively, uh, and really, if you look down deep in your heart, uh, Every single problem in the world is caused by easy money. Every single problem, you name it. You tell me a problem and I'll tell you how it's caused by easy money. Uh, uh, so leading on to that, every single problem in the world uh, uh, you know, starts from there. So it's not even worth comparing it uh, because when you come out uh, you know, with such a bold claim, uh, it's difficult to form... Uh, a, co a coherent, uh, pointed uh, argument. Well, I'm sure you know. I'm sure there's others uh, that you know probably have developed a concise, clear one. But the, the best one I've seen is probably a book that's about 200 pages long uh, in, the, in the Bitcoin standard. So that's a strong argument. Uh, but there's, it's difficult to, to portray in a soundbite. Yeah. Whereas things like, uh, you know, this is, this is, you know, what it takes to, to get, uh, uh, you know, a gold ring. Uh, this is what your paper and coins uh, 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 do to the environment every year. So on to, so we'll step away from, uh, from, you know, the problem of, you know, easy money uh, causing everything. And we'll just go on to the, the tangible environmental impacts of like running the fiat system. So it's effectively all of your bank branches, all of your ATMs, uh, uh, all of the all of the materials, water, energy, you know, that you need to to actual actually print currency, uh, mint coins. Uh, what else is there to consider? You know, data centers and servers backing up all the banks stuff. So these these are tangible, you know, things you can assess, and. Uh, and you know when you put when you put that together, uh, it it dwarfs Bitcoin, gold, and most other things. Uh, you know combined, you know there's there's uh, two hundred thousand ATMs around the world alone. Uh, I believe was the stat. I did some research on it in, in twenty fourteen with a lot of numbers. Uh, I suppose we'll, we'll shill a link uh, to that in the in the video description. Uh, uh, but uh, it's along very, very similar uh, to, you know, to, to gold's impact. So, if, so for coins, uh, you, still, you still have to do a lot of mining to get, you know, copper, nickel, zinc, uh, you know, out of the ground. Like these are destructive metals and there's a, there's a lot of metal. Uh, so, uh, so as I told you, you know, a 10 gram uh, gold ring, uh, you know, there's, there's all this impact. Uh, you know, I... Do you know how easy it is to fill 10 grams of change in, in your pocket? I don't think anyone's ever walked around with, with less than probably half a kilo of change in their pocket. Uh, Especially uh, in Australia, you got those big coins. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, uh, so there's, huge, there's huge impact in, uh, in you know, the life cycle you know, from getting it you know, from the earth into a coin. Uh, you know, the cotton, the cotton and, uh, and all that that kind of stuff, water, pulp. Uh, if you've got maybe 20 minutes to spare, I'd recommend reading the full article because I go, I go uh, one by one through impact of every single currency. Wow. Like I know how much the euro 
uh, burns through in printing and minting, US, India, Australia. So I've given metrics on, uh, on everyone. Uh, so uh, the, the, the Canadian stuff is the good stuff. The Canadian and Aussie stuff, plastic, very sustainable. Uh, the, uh, uh, the dollar, not so much so. Uh, uh, you know, as we move to a cashless society, the, you know, this will be better for the planet, uh, but not so much better for humanity. And uh, this is why Bitcoin exists. Yeah, 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 100%. So, so basically, the, the production and, and sustaining the, the fiat system is just, like you said, it's, it's leaps and bounds above what it costs to, to, to dig the gold out of the ground. Because, I mean, you're, you're mining all of, the, all of the coins themselves. You're collecting the cotton. You're, you're creating the bills. I was, I'm surprised to hear, well, I guess I'm not that surprised to hear that the plastic bills are more sustainable. I mean, they're, they're more durable, probably last longer. Is that what it well, was? They, they, I think uh, that I've, I've put in my research the, the, the main circulation life of every denomination uh, and, uh, and on average, like the small notes paper lasts like, uh, uh, four and a half to five years, whereas the plastic, you can run them in circulation for like 10 to 15. Wow. Really? Yeah. The larger notes, like the, the fifties and the hundreds that don't move hands very often, they stay in circulation for like forever. Uh, maybe like uh, 20 years they'll stay in circulation. So that's why. It's more sustainable on a life cycle uh, assessment. Uh, they last longer and you can use recycled materials to make them. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, so how long do you think before we, we just don't have our, our cash anymore? Do you think we're well on our way? As, as soon as the government uh, uh, can, as soon as it, uh, it becomes politically expedient too, uh, they'll do it. Uh, so we've got to be ready uh, uh, before they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we've got, we've, we've got some building to do before we, we get there. Like, a, you know, if, if it was a snap decision in the next couple of years, which would, I think would be very difficult to pull off. We definitely wouldn't be ready yet. Oh no, I'd, I'd say it's closer to a, to a five to 10 year, uh, horizon. Some countries in Europe, like are already moving on it. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely think we still need four, five, six, seven years of, uh, of building to be ready. Do you uh, think so, we'll be ready? Uh, oh yeah, definitely. Five, six years? Are you kidding me? Uh, <laughs> I've uh, so I've been around five years so far, and I've seen oh, a bit, bit longer now, close to six now, and I've I've seen uh, what's happened. Uh, the last uh, you know, two years, I saw double the innovation of my first four. Uh, so in six years time, uh, we're going to be, we're going to be easy. We're going to be on, on layer four. <laughs> I definitely hope so. I've, I've been very impressed with this, you know, people get impatient about having things like lightning and, but I mean the, the speed of innovation that I've seen, even just since it launched, last March, you know, in, in, a, in a year's time, um, the ease with which you can onboard to something like lightning and actually use it quickly and seamlessly is pretty astounding. And, and stuff that people like Jack Mallers are putting out. To How good on. is that? That was amazing. Yes. The demo last week. Yes. Incredible. Those of you that don't know, he, I, I spoke about it on the show the, uh, a little while ago, but um, essentially easy onboarding, uh, direct um, fiat buys, direct to Lightning Network that then allows you to be spending your Bitcoin on Lightning Network within seconds of receiving. You don't have to wait for a Bitcoin confirmation or anything. You don't have to worry about opening up a channel. They open up a channel with you and fund your side of the channel. Uh, amazing work coming from Jack. So super excited about that. No, no, it's, uh, yeah, like I said, six years, we're going to be easy. Don't worry. Like, uh, I, the thing is, uh, when you go to events like Baltic Honey Badger, uh, and, and the rest, you see, uh, you see the amount of uh, intellectual capital 
uh, on display and on offer. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, five, six years will be, will be ready. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely think 2024 that, halving will be ready. Yeah, there we go. You heard it here, folks. 2024. We're ready. We're, we're taking the world by storm. <laughs> now I was going to ask you, uh, is, is there, are, are there other aspects of this that you'd like to kind of touch on as far as, um, you know, it impacts of Bitcoin versus gold or fiat. Is there any anything that you'd like to point people to? Um, uh, any any things that you wanted to throw in here, or we're, we're gonna yes. have links to the articles. But I'll, I'm, I want to set you on your own devices here, set you to your own devices here, and let you um, get out what you want to get out and and impress upon people here. Okay. So here's here is what I want to impress upon people. Uh, it's not all about CO2, right? The world isn't all about carbon emissions. It's a big factor, and we gotta we got to worry about carbon emissions. Uh, but I'll give you uh, an example of where carbon emissions don't matter in the scheme of things. So let's compare recycled gold and mined gold. So recycled gold uses 40% or produces 40% uh, more CO2 or CO2E, so carb CO2 and uh, equivalents, so greenhouse gases, uh, than mining gold per kilogram. 99.9% .9 less water use, 99.9% .9 less ecotoxicity, 85% less acidification, 99% less eutrophication. So you look on every single environmental metric, uh, uh, like recycled gold is a is a is a dream, it's a miracle, uh, but it uses forty percent more carbon than mined gold. So we got to get out of the out of the carbon mindset. So like uh, you know we're running out of water to drink. So can we put a trillion liters of water into mining gold every year? Yeah. So like uh, so so the point is uh, 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 be sustainable in a in a holistic way. Uh, don't just think about emissions because uh, 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 it's only a very, very small uh, part of the equation. And uh, that's something that's been, uh, again, successfully conflated with uh, uh, CO2, bad. Uh, you know, whereas, uh, whereas it's all about energy, 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 energy. Everything in the world, in the universe rather, is just uh, energy moving from from one uh, form to a, to the next, uh, finite but infinitely divisible, and Bitcoin is just simply the monetization of this energy, uh, finite and infinitely divisible. So, uh, so only energy matters. So if we can get those emissions down, we're easy. Who cares? And I do. I really do believe that in the in the future, uh, you know, like. Uh, you know, pension funds. Uh, uh, so the Canadians, you guys are you, your pension funds own everything. So the reason uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, the world's roads, uh, you know, uh, uh, private utilities like desal plants and all of that are owned, you know, by Canadian teachers and uh, a lot of the other big uh, big funds. Uh, these assets are good for something called asset liability matching. Okay. So, uh, so uh, uh, pensioners need a you know very slow stream of consistent weekly income. Uh, toll roads receive a very consistent stream of income. So you own a toll road over you got a thirty to fifty year concession of nice consistent cash flow coming in over time, and you pay that out to your pension uh, pension guys. This is why they love infrastructure. Uh, I can definitely see big pension funds uh, putting up nuclear power plants and signing 50-year leases uh, with Bitcoin miners and their business model simply being charging fixed-price electricity. Wow. And, uh, you know, uh, well, if they know what's, what's right for them, even if, you know, uh, Bitcoin's a failure, they, they've still got a power plant out of it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, you know you can you can repurpose it uh, for something else, but uh, yeah, I do see a lot of pop up uh, 
plants coming up, remote remote plants, different different kind of tech uh, popping up just to uh, just to facilitate that. Uh, and 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 pension funds, if they know what's good for them, uh, uh, might want to might want to look at the public infrastructure, the public physical infrastructure of uh, of Bitcoin. I like that. I like. I've I've definitely noticed that that Bitcoin is is creeping into uh, some of the public infrastructure, particularly here uh, where I'm from in Alberta, in Canada. We have a lot of. Uh, natural gas that's that's very stranded um, and a lot of time it just gets vented into the atmosphere or, or flared and and now there uh, there's companies showing up that have mobile uh, Bitcoin miners and they just yeah, upstream Steve Barber exactly upstream data he's uh, he's he's a great guy he's got a great product and he can just roll up to to any well and 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 just start start mining and and those miners can take profit where there would be a loss before um and that's a great thing to see they're they're building amazing things and uh and again it's 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 helping the environment by doing it so i I do see bitcoin contributing to this this uh lean towards greener and more sustainable energy sources over time and optimizing what we currently do have for infrastructure right now. Yeah. But, uh, but I think it won't be because of the environmental incentives. It'll be yeah. because of the economic ones. Yeah. So yeah. hundred percent. Chasing that, chasing that cheap energy uh, will just keep driving the, the cost of, uh, of renewables down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know when the you know as the renewables market grows, you know the research around it grows, and you get a you get a good virtuous circle, and uh, you know uh, uh, dot 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 twenty fifty hundred percent renewable <laughs> Bitcoin in a single you know in a few decades goes from killing the planet to driving a green industry. Yeah, look, it's not killing the planet now. So you've got like sort of a, a spectrum of guesses. Yeah. So you've got um, on one side of the spectrum, uh, coin shares and, uh, and uh, Chris Bendingson's research that put it as high as 75% renewable. Uh, and on the other side, you've got the, the Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance putting it closer to 28 and, and 20, 28 is still quite a bit higher than industry averages, right? Yeah, so a global average grid is, uh, is 18%. Uh, if you include nuclear, if you don't, it's like uh, 12. So, so uh, uh, one, of the, one of the big uh, uh, major power, like one of the main power sources driving Bitcoin is, is uh, Canadian hydro. Canadian hydro, US hydro, European hydro. Uh, you know, that's cheap as chips. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. clean. Yeah. We see a lot of that in Quebec, uh, a lot of hydro there. And then yeah, Calgary and, and, uh, Alberta, a lot of the natural, natural gas capturing that. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, interesting impacts moving forward. Um, so I, I guess what I, I wanted to, to, unless you have anything else to tack on, what I I, I was going to kind of start wrapping. I'm just being conscious of time here. Um, there, there's a, a, a we're going to take a step a, away from the environmental and and such, uh, and just have kind of maybe your own little bit of advice for anybody that's that's uh, maybe. N- newish to the space the past couple of years is trying to navigate what we're, what they're doing um, in, in any sense. But I just like to get maybe a tidbit from yourself, maybe anything that you've learned in the past number of years being in Bitcoin uh, pieces of advice that you wish you had had as a newcomer to Bitcoin, whether it be dealing with FUD, dealing with volatility, proper security practices, anything like that, that you'd like to bestow upon the newbies out there. Uh, listen, listen to your, yourself, your heart and your soul. Uh, so I always say Bitcoin's won the battle of the minds for now, but we won the, the, the battle for the hearts. 
uh, and things like the the little Bitcoin book go a very long way uh, to winning the battle of the heart. So uh, so open your heart to Bitcoin, learn about that, and then everything else like you know falls by the wayside in terms of like tech and security and and all that kind of stuff. And uh, and uh, you know don't treat it like a lottery ticket. Take a stand, commit your heart to this thing, and uh, you know, if you want the price to be stable, uh, you got to put your nuts on the table. So you got to bring you got to bring money into this ecosystem as frequently as you can to whatever your ability is, uh, even if it's five bucks or uh, you know, it's uh, it's tried and true. It provides uh, uh, and, a, and a hard floor to the market, and uh, you know, the more. Uh, you know, uh, you know, weekly savers we uh, we we get in Bitcoin. Uh, you know, the the bigger it gets. So, uh, you know, commit to the future you want to live and uh, go build it. It's really as easy as just hodling. Awesome, so excellent advice. advice. Hold on straight, and if uh, if your heart's in it, uh, uh, who cares if you lose? Uh, you know, it's just like uh, you know, buying a, a, I don't know a car that was very special. Uh, to you, and you know, and, you know, didn't become uh, uh, didn't become worth much. Uh, it's uh, it'll still you know be there, be there in your heart. But yeah, the a car is like nothing compared. Obviously, you know, the love of a car can never ever come even close uh, to the love of Bitcoin. I don't even know if uh, if uh, if a uh, if a partner and child can even uh, can even come close. <laughs> I, I just I just bring mine into the fold, and they're gonna yeah. have a love of Bitcoin with me. Um, <laughs> they get sucked into the gravity of the love. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so Hass, thank you very much again for being on the show. Uh, so before we sign off, if you could just let people know if they're unfamiliar with you and your work, where can they find you? Okay, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Hass McCook, uh, as well as on Medium, uh, the same uh, same tag at Hass McCook. Uh, uh, the Medium stuff is uh, is uh, is. Uh, not that recent, but recent enough. That's from uh, August 2018, and uh, my work on uh, on you know uh, on the on the minting and printing of, of paper notes in the in the fiat system is is way back uh, way back from 2014 uh, uh, on on CoinDesk. Uh, my uh, my feelings about CoinDesk have uh, have uh, have evolved quite substantially in the past uh, five years. So uh, forgive me for the errors of my uh, of my past. <laughs> that's all good that's all good well i will link to all of that down below um and yeah if you guys want to catch up with Hass on twitter and medium you can check him out there uh he's a great follow on twitter so be sure to swing by and tell him you say hello from the btc sessions uh Hass, again thank you for being here